Welcome to my Mythic Coven of the Shivara Guide. Uh, this fight is a little bit easier than, well, it isn't bad, to be honest with you. I thought Imanar and King Grath was a lot harder. Um, the reason why this is easier is because the entire like sequence of abilities are always set in stone. They never change. So you can assign people to do certain things, and you know it's always going to happen. So before we look at that, let's go ahead and look at talents. Uh, for this fight, I recommend using Abyssal Strike, Fallout, Flame Crash, Fracture, Sigil of Chains, Spear Bomb, and Last Resort. So the basic setup here. Uh, Gear-wise, highest eye level. Um, you don't get meleeed very often, so having the four piece isn't that important. So highest eye level. Uh, Legendary-wise, I'd recommend the Belt and Archimonds. Uh And the Pantheon Trinket. Other legendaries that are good are and pop this up Pridus is not very good but you could use it if you have nothing better um cloak of fell flames could be okay if you have it up for every slash uh, it's not bad boots is okay you can get a lot of cleave on if your uh, tanks and dps position the, the bosses properly you can get some uh, immolation on two targets Pants are okay, you don't need them. Um, stats are nice, but you honestly just don't need them. Uh, Safus is not very good. You can get uh, procs on the walking ads, but that's it. And Insignia, if you have good tier 2 talents, isn't bad. And that's really it, guys. So those are the gear I would recommend. And then for your consumables, it's the agility flask, agility food, and then potion of old war. In the video, I use prolonged power because I always use prolonged power on progression because we die a lot. It's just easier to, to manage. So that is the uh, setup. Let's go ahead and take a look at the fight. All right, so here we are. So we have uh, four markers down. We have a skull here, an X here, a square here, and a moon here. This is for the healing adds and for the uh, the mass entangles for the druids. Uh, so the first thing you probably notice is there's now a fell add. Basically, she is now in the rotation. It's so only two bosses up at a time, just like heroic. But with this, um, she's basically an interrupt add, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, so basically on the pull, what we're going to do is put both tanks on the fire add and a DPS with a taunt is going to be on the shadow add. The shadow add does exactly zero melee hits. All she does is just cast random abilities. So you just have a DPS tanker and then you don't have to worry about ever switching and making them immune. So on the pull, what you got to watch out for is I'm going to jump in and pull her back here. Um, don't blow any of your big CDs like fire brand or anything until you know they're properly positioned so she's not uh, immune. So I'm going to jump in, taunt, walk her back. Saving all my big CDs. Now, she is not immune. I blow them all. Do my normal rotation. Meta, Archimons, all that. Beware. Um, for the... We, we switch at three fire strikes. So basically, I EW the first one and the third one for maximum siphon power uptime. And I got hit by Shadow Blades because I was being bad. This is our first kill, and I'm relating, so it's not going to be perfect. Keep in mind. I don't get to focus on my own personal play to like a third or fourth kill, so it's not perfect. So, Storm of Darkness, throw up in Power Wards. Um, the off tank's going to taunt at three. And I'm just going to stay here in deeps. If you are not actively tanking and you have Empower Wards ready, you can stand in the storm with it up to get Siphon Power. You can also get Siphon Power from standing in other people's fire explosions, um, other abilities like that. So now we're trying to get them back together. The whole idea is you want them close enough, that way everybody can cleave on both. And as a tank, if you stand in between them and use a Spirit Bomb, you can actually hit both of them. And the last part of this uh, fight is a burn phase, so we want them as low as possible. So we're going to move them into this corner here. Uh, the first torment is the fire torment. And I know from just practice that a ton of safe zones spawn right here in this corner. Just like that. So we're going to tank them here so we can cleave on the torment while still tanking. 
So there's the flame torment. And I'm gonna try to cleave on both the boss and this torment. Uh, I don't go after the other flame torments because I know they're gonna die in plenty of time and it's just single target damage. We can always pull the fire adder around, but it's really not worth it. Uh, I do know that the walking ads are always second, and it's gonna happen right when I need to taunt. So third far strike goes out. I know I'm gonna have to taunt, and I know that we're going to have uh, the walking ad. So what I'm gonna do is bring the boss over here. And how we have this set up is we are mass entangling and we only have three druids. Ideally, ideally you want to have four druids and mass entangle all four sides, but we only have three. So on this side, we're going to have a BDK, uh, two is AOE death grip. And then we're going to root them in place with a shaman. And then I'm going to pull them back with a chains. Beware. I also know storm is coming now. And I got lucky with that position, by the way. So pull together, then rooted. And I know I make a mistake here. I'm not watching my feet as they start to move again when I go to cast my chains, and I'm gonna die. I'm gonna pop LR here. See, right there, I'm just too close. So I'm gonna cast uh, chains over here, and just gonna pull them back again. So on the third strike here, it's gonna taunt, and it'll be three seconds so we can kill the adds. Uh, for the single ads, like over here, you see a couple that are still walking. You want to use single target uh, CC, like blind, uh, single target uh, roots, um, or anything like that. Four, and if you have an ability three, that can hit all the targets, two, you should. Alright, so for the lightning torment that comes next, um, it's quite easy, is just don't stand next to other people. So when lightning happens, the fire... Uh, sister goes away and the frost one comes down and I'm gonna solo tank the frost one the entire time So I'm waiting for it to come out. I'm gonna taunt and bring her back towards this lightning ad And I'm gonna try to cleave off of her and on the lightning ad So my position here is off I should be two steps to the right and if I was I could be hitting both But I had bad positioning here there. See, I move over to the last second, but the ad does anyway. So, we ban all fast moving spells. So, we ban Fell Rush, we ban Rolls, we ban Blinks. Anything that you just go across the map quickly, you're not allowed to use here. Because this phase is not hard. All you gotta do is just not kill yourself. So, what we do is with the Frosty buff, when I get to three stacks, I call for a Blessing of Freedom, and they're gone. So, I solo tank this phase the entire time. And I just get Blessing of Freedoms non-stop. Every three stacks. So here we split up the raid in two halves. Um, we save Bloodlust for this point. We have a Skull and we have an X. A half the raid's at Skull, the other half is at X. We Bloodlust and kill these two at the same time. And then once these two die, we send the entire raid over to the square. And then the entire raid over to the moon. So split 1-1 one, one is how it should work. Um... So I tank the ad on top of this ad, and I just DPS the ad as I cleave on the boss. The uh, goal here is to kill these before your stacks get too high, because you will start to die pretty quickly if you let these stacks get up. So three stacks, call for blessing and freedom. Uh, you should be using your power wards as much as you can, or as much as possible here. I know I make mistakes with it, I'm not perfect. Again, raid leading, first kill. Uh, but you should be using as much as you can for these frost eggs. Oh, let's talk about this, um, the fellow ad. It just came down, it's kind of hard to see from my perspective. So she has two abilities that you have to worry about. First, she puts two markers on two people, and then after a short period of time, you're going to have Fell Lightning shoot across those two people. You do not want to stand in it, because it will do damage. As a tank, you should be fine, but everybody else will be in trouble. But the most important part is this Touch of Cosmos. It is a cast that needs to be interrupted, and she spams it. So you need to set up an interrupt rotation to deal with it. So it means, and you have to be, ideally, you should be vocal. Like, I got next, 
And once you get it, the next person will be like, I got next, I got next, and you keep interrupting. If you do not interrupt it, two people are one shot every time. So basically the other tank, since I'm solo tanking the frost um, boss, the other tank will be on it. And then mainly melee DPS with range uh, DPS as backups. Um, so basically we got to get this nice rotation set up for these interrupts. Um, yeah, that's really it for the poison ad. So there really isn't much besides not standing into the uh, the fell lightning and just get the interrupts down. One. So after the healing, I oh, was at the healing ass. Yeah, after the healing ass, we go back and we rotate. So I'm gonna try to pull the boss back so I can cleave on both ads. Again, blessing afraid of my three sacks. Should be happening any second. There it is. And then we're going to move him over, start cleaving on the other one. I should move him over. There we go. So after the flame ads, we go through the same set of torments again. Next is the walking ads. But the good news about these walking ads is they're a lot easier because the shadow sister is not down. There is no storm you have to worry about. So all you do is you just do the rotation, the CC rotation. And you don't ha ever have to worry about positioning. So you can stand anywhere. The only hard part about this fight is dealing with the storm in combination of bad torments. So there is no storm here. So we don't have to worry about the, the, uh, the positioning. Uh, oh, oh, pause it. Okay. Uh, here's the two green arrows. That means that Fell is going to shoot right across this. And you don't want to stand at it. Okay, see it? There it goes. All right, so here comes the lightning uh, phase. Depending on position here is what you want to do. Uh, this kill, uh, we killed the lightning as and on our first kill. The kill that we just did a couple of days ago this week, which was our third kill, uh, we actually had the bosses low enough that we could just ignore the lightning ads. So it depends on what percentage of the boss is. If the boss is around 12%, I would say ignore the lightning ads and just finish the boss off. If the boss is above 12%, kill the ads, and then ignore the healing ads. So everybody spreads out. Alright, so at this point is when the fire ad comes down. So I'm going to taunt her over. Um... At this point, we had a DPS taunt the uh, Fell Sister off the other tank because the Fell Sister also doesn't melee. So they taunt her off of the tank so he can switch with me at three stacks. Because this is the fire ad that you have to switch. He's going to taunt. So the healing ads comes out and the boss is at 7%. We're going to ignore all the healing ads and just finish the boss off. The Shadow um, Sister dropped down at this point as well. They get a little too close. I'm yelling at them to move them away. There we go. Some reason we left the Lightning Ads up way too long, so you, we haven't stacked. Ideally at this point, you want to stack if it's the Healing Ads so that we can uh, stack healing cooldowns. So Lightning Ads down, everybody should be stacking in between the bosses. And that's going to be it. Um, we tried to kill the healing ads. Uh, the first few wipes that we had, that we that were close kills, we tried to kill the second set of healing ads, and we always died. Every time. Um, so I highly recommend not doing that. If you if you have solid DPS, about 10 to 12% going into the lightning ads, I would say skip those ads and just kill the boss. If you have to kill the lightning ads, like we did on this kill, and kill the lightning ads, then kill the boss and ignore the healing ads. But that is it. That is Mythic Coven. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And thank you for watching.